Hey there, this is Mark, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to add a highlight and a tone to a character. Now there's a strong light source in this scene, so what we want to do is want to make sure that there is a highlight at the top of this character, and then we want to add a ramp of darkness to the bottom so that the character really sits on the ground and ramp it up to normal colors afterwards. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to add a highlight module, and we can type in highlight and drag that in and connect it right underneath your color scale. Now the highlight module has a matte port so we need to plug something in here so that it knows what parts of the character to highlight. We're actually going to use the character itself and offset it so I'm going to remove whatever I had in my search bar here and I'm just going to scroll down to the move filter. And in this one I'll choose the second one which is an apply peg transformation. Now if we look at the top here, we see there's three inputs. The right one is the image, middle one is an insertion point, and the left one is a transformation. So we're going to use the transformation and the image in this case. And I'll use the flattened bitmap composite of the character so that we have less information to calculate, uh, as opposed to if it took every piece of the character uh, at the source. Then we're going to plug the bottom into the highlight. As you can see right away, it highlights the entire character because we haven't offset it. So it's basically the character being highlighted by itself. So we want to reverse that. I'm just going to double click this mask icon. And if you want to know how to do that in here, it's right down here at the invert mat. So we have a reverse mask. Now we're not using it, any of the character. We're basically saying wherever this character is not, we, we will highlight. So I'll add a peg to the left port of the apply peg transformation and then over here I'll switch to my uh, advanced translate tools. And we're going to click and drag this uh, vertical arrow just so that we have a slight offset. So you can see that we have this kind of offset gray. Uh, that's how it's represented in the OpenGL. But if we render it, we'll see that we have a highlight showing. Now if we go in the highlight, we can control a few more things. Uh, we can change the radius. If we wanted it to, to not be blurred at all, we could put it to zero. But let's put that back to two. And then we can also pick a color. So if I click here, I can then go and say, all right, well, this light source is kind of a yellow orangish, So I'm going to go in that range and kind of give it that kind of a tint. Um, but there's a difference between this kind of uh, highlight and a multiplicative highlight. Now the way I like to describe it is a highlight module uh, at normal mode is basically uh, colors on top. And if you use a multiplicative highlight, it's essentially the mathematical pixel equation, shall we say, of light actually hitting the character. To understand this, uh, I usually use a color wheel. Um, which I'll just bring up here now. And you can see uh, from a color wheel standpoint that we have the ranges of the hue. Now, if I check multiplicative while I'm in this color here, you'll see that it takes the opposite end of the spectrum. Now all of a sudden I have a blue highlight. So let's bring back that color wheel. So because I'm in this range, it's giving me the opposite end of the spectrum, which is a blue highlight which means that if I actually want a multiplicative bright color, I'll actually want to go the opposite end and get a blue. If I wanted a, a green, I would actually pick a red. So with that in mind, I'm just going to switch this hue over to the blues, and that essentially switches my multiplicative highlight to uh, a yellow orangish. So just to show the difference once again, here is a multiplicative highlight. I'm going to turn off the uh, auto render so you can see the difference. And this looks more like actual light hitting. And let's turn off multiplicative and switch back to our original color and render that. This is more of a color on top. So let's switch back. We're going to pick that multiplicative mode. We're going to pick that uh, blue. And you can pick between your undo list if you wanted to go back to the exact same uh, color. So turn this back on. And this might be a little too bright, a little too intense. So we will lower the alpha, and I'll go down from 100, say, to uh, 60. 
and that feels a little nicer. It doesn't burn as much and uh, it makes a nice highlight. Okay, so we have our highlight. And next, what we want to do is create a gradient ramp so that it really sits that character on the ground. Now, so we're just going to add a tone down here. And you can search for tone or you can just scroll up and go to the combine filter. And there's the tone. So we're going to attach this here. And then I actually want to zoom out because I want to make sure that this character, as it treks through the scene, uh, gets the same base throughout. Uh, and I'm going to use a rectangle. So if I go down to my options down here, I have this option selected, which means that if I paint, it will also fill at the same time. And if I go to my colors, I can see that it's filling uh, black and it's giving me a black line and it's giving me a red brush. So if I want these to change, I can always make a modification, but uh, I'm happy with this color. I'll go back and I'll create a new drawing and we'll call this gradient. Now you can do a new drawing again by hitting Control R on a PC or Command R on a Mac. Okay, so I have my gradient and I'll wire this in here to the tone. And uh, let's add a peg. And while the node is selected, you hit Control P on a PC or Command P on a Mac. Now we have a couple of options. We can draw this and blur it in the tone or we could zero out the blur here and just add a blur outside. It depends on how you want to build it. So first we'll draw a rectangle and I'll just draw this over here. And you can see that it filled it automatically. If I go to my drawing view, uh, I want to make sure to remove the line as always so we have a single shape. If we want to see uh, that gradient, we could always wire it out and plug it into the composite so we can visually see where we drew that gradient and I'll just undo that twice. So we're back to where we were. And now I want to blur it because I don't want it to be a hard edge. If we actually render this, this is what we're getting. It's a little intense, so let's lower the alpha down to 80. And uh, let's turn this truck vector off and we'll make the radius, uh, let's do 60. So you can see that the character is sitting on the ground better. It's a, a little darker at the bottom and it ramps back up. If we disable the tone, you can see the difference between uh, on and off. One more thing we could do and this is specifically to get rid of these highlights at the bottom, is we can cut, uh, or rather add to the highlight here. Since we are saying wherever this shape is not, it will reveal a highlight, we wanna add to the shape, so to say, okay, well, there's going to be a shape down here, we also don't want highlight down here. So I can literally just take this gradient and uh, add a composite, like so, and then plug that in so we can add to this composite. Now here's a trick why you would want to blur outside as opposed to inside of a tone, is that if I plug this in, I still need a blur to match what we did inside the tone. So instead what I'll do is I'll open up the properties and I'll zero the radius here so it goes back to completely sharp. And instead I'll add the blur outside. So let's add a blur in from our filter, blur radial. Click the properties. Again, I'll turn my truck factor off and make that 60. So now I have the exact same result on the outside that I had using a tone, but I can just wire that blur here and it vanishes in a ramp fashion the highlight so that we don't have highlights down at the bottom and only at the top. Let's also not forget one last step that our gradient has been created on frame 10 and we want it to last the entire duration. So we're gonna select that and move it to the first frame and then go to the last frame and hit F5 to extend the exposure. That way we know that gradient hugs the entire bottom uh, for the whole time. 